What's up guys? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. This week we are going to be talking about the rare aura colors, what the rare aura colors are, and kind of what defines the rare aura colors, and yeah, we're gonna just, we're gonna hop into it. Now, per usual, if you enjoy spiritual educational content, that's mostly what I cover on this YouTube channel. Occasionally I post vlogs of me getting tattooed and some life stuff, but for the most part we focus on spiritual education. So if that interests you, hit that subscribe button, turn the bell icon on so you don't miss when I post new YouTube videos. Now this does conclude the series for the aura colors and there is a playlist in the description section below if you're interested in looking at the blue aura, the green aura, purple, you know, you name the color, it's in that description section down below in that playlist. All right, so just want to update you guys really quick and then we'll get into the video. I have now officially launched my NFTs. Yay! So if you're interested in buying those NFTs, they are linked in the description, but you can also find them on OpenSea by searching for Holly Hunty Official on there. The Aura Masterclass is now open again. Enrollment will end here on May 1st. Spaces are limited, so if you're interested in joining that course, definitely make sure that you go and again check out the description section of this video. All of those goodies are down in there. I professionally read auras, so if you're interested in getting an aura reading from me, that's also in the description section of this video. I will be working on adding more classes and courses to my online school, so if you're wanting to learn how to channel spirit guides um, and other things along those lines, I will be adding, that will be the next course that I will be adding on there, is specifically learning how to channel. I'm really excited for that one, so if you're interested in getting updates on any of the new classes and courses that I launch, definitely make sure that you join my email list, which you can, as you guessed it, find that in the description of the video. Without further ado, let's hop into it. What defines a rare aura? Well, honestly, it's just the amount of times that I've personally seen this color in the different auras that I've read. I'm now at 500 plus that I've done, about 300 video readings, about 200 aura paintings, somewhere in that range. So we're just, we're cruising past that 500 number pretty quickly. With that being said, when you read enough people, you get a really good idea of how often you see these different colors and what the rarity value is of the colors. Now, a lot of people I feel kind of look at these aura colors as like a hierarchy, like, oh, I have to be like a rainbow because then I'm special. I just want to mention that most of the people who have rare aura colors don't expect that they have rare aura colors, and honestly, most of the people who have these kind of rare attributes and rare abilities, it's because they are um, kind of at a higher energetic level, but with that higher energetic level, you don't really have like this ego of like, mm, I'm special, if that makes sense, and I just want to preface that because I see this a lot where people are like, I have to be rainbow, and if I'm not rainbow or like copper, then I hate my aura colors, and that's that's not the point. <laughs> so anyway, let's get into the rare aura colors now. Rainbow aura. Now, some aura readers view the rainbow aura as being more than three to four colors in the aura field. However, whenever I read the aura, I look for the full spectrum of colors in the aura field before I designate it personally as being a rainbow aura. There are plenty of people that I've read that go up to about five colors. Um, then that's like probably one in a hundred people have up to about five colors. Yes, they kind of start to fall into the rainbow spectrum, but they might have like two different shades of green and, you know, like one yellow and a blue and a purple, for example. That's not the full spectrum. They would also need uh, red, I think is what I missed in that. Now, an average amount of aura colors is about two to four one being kind of rare, usually people have a minimum of about two. If you have only one, that means that you are like very, very much focused on that specific skill set in this lifetime that that aura color has to offer. Now, aura colors do change over time, and I do recommend watching the YouTube video that I have on what determines your aura colors to get a little bit more information on how that works. 
About one in 600 adults have rainbow auras. Now this is much more common in children and the reason for that is that they're fresh out of the womb. They are downloaded here from the spirit realm and they are ready to go. They are much more in alignment with all of their chakras and they are, you know, a little bit more flexible and malleable and they have that full spectrum of expression because they have yet to figure out what dynamics are required from them based on what their parents influence are on them and I could get more into this but it would be quite a rant so I won't but in summary one in 600 adults have rainbow auras now each rainbow aura is a little bit different they usually have about one to two colors that they still kind of stick into the most for example i've seen people who have a rainbow but then they really like to go into bright green and lemon yellow a lot of the time as an example um, and so those two colors maybe play a larger role in their experience of life even though they do still have that whole rainbow aspect to them, they may still have certain colors in that spectrum that they like to visit the most. Some rainbow individuals will work only in pastels, which is really interesting, while others will work only in the bright tones. Now, I've yet to see a rainbow aura in the deeper tones, and this is just because usually the deeper tones are a little bit more focused on uh, deeper aspects of life. Um, not to say that the brighter tones aren't by any means either, but rainbow auras naturally are so playful and outgoing that they don't usually fall into these deeper tones of the color spectrum. Now, on occasion, you may have just a small patch of rainbow kind of in your energy field. And this is usually when people are kind of falling out of being in this rainbow energy. And they just almost have like this little section that they keep of rainbow to themselves and oftentimes this is um, a way of keeping themselves safe, keeping themselves secure, and kind of keeping um, their energy to themselves and sort of being like, okay, I've still got this little bit of rainbow over here tucked away. And then when I realize that people around me are cool enough, I'll open up and be like, oh, <laughs> um, and usually that's kind of like the last bit before somebody will just kind of let go of it and get very uh, much more rigid. It's kind of, you know, when we think about when we're kids and we're all very playful and fun and outgoing and you look at adults and they're all very like structured and rigid and they have things a certain way it's kind of like that transition and the end of the transition for somebody who has a rainbow aura and they're headed into a little bit more of a regimented life um people with rainbow auras if they have, you know, a full spectrum or they're really um, in touch with their rainbow aura still, they tend to be like vagabonds kind of to some degree or artists or um, very creative individuals. Personality traits of the rainbow aura. Rainbow auras, as I've kind of said, are really fun, they're really outgoing, they're very flexible, playful, and they're just like the life of the party. They're the people that you want to be around. People are naturally very attracted to people who have rainbow auras, um, and that's, I mean, fairly obvious because they're just like, oh. <laughs> because rainbow auras have this full spectrum, occasionally they can get lost when they are around other people because it's very easy for them to match other people's energy. They're very empathic they're naturally incredibly intuitive and so say you know you're a rainbow and somebody pops up that's like a forest green you're more likely to try to match their energy as much as possible um and so unless you feel really comfortable and then you'll you know be in your whole like oh kind of vibe um however a lot of the time people who have rainbow auras uh, do try to match other people and it's something to be kind of cautious of if this is your aura color um, because it can kind of drag you down. You end up sort of dimming your shine in order to make the other person feel more comfortable around you and the whole reason people gravitate towards you is because you have this amazing literally glow of energy about you because you have that rainbow.
rainbow aura. Oftentimes people who have rainbow auras feel a little bit different, a little otherworldly, a little bit like other people don't get them because of how unique they are. And that's a very common feeling for people who have a rare aura color because they do have different unique dynamics that they're bringing to the world around them. And unfortunately, other people have a little bit harder of a time matching that occasionally. Career and relationship for those who have rainbow auras. With career for rainbow auras, they naturally are so dynamic, as we've talked about, that they do fall very well, very easily into any career field. However, they do very, very well when they are in a career that feels creative, that feels fun, that feels playful. Now, I have seen it where they do work with children because children know how to reciprocate that energy quite well. Um, but if it's not working with kids, then it's usually an art career, theater, um, music production, things kind of along those lines where they feel like they can just be free and have as much fun as they want in this lifetime. Rainbow auras absolutely thrive in relationships and this is because they are so dynamic, they're so empathic, they're so fun and playful and outgoing. Um, the only thing is, is they occasionally feel like their partner doesn't really understand them. They do very well if they feel like they can find the right person. They do really well in relationships that are very nurturing, loving, and that feel very grounded for them. And this is because they feel like then they can express all the aspects of themselves. However, the person still has to have some level of outgoing and creative attributes. Bright green is a fantastic color as far as a partner is concerned for people who have rainbow auras, along with a little bit more of a creative color like sky blue, uh, lilac. Those are some colors that do really well for those who have rainbow auras. I also offer compatibility readings, and if you're interested in learning how to physically see auras, I do have a masterclass called the Aura Masterclass, and it is linked in the description below. I will be saying this at the end of every single color, so if you're watching every color, I apologize, but you know, a girl's gotta let people know about the cool class that she has to offer. All right. <laughs> Crystal Aura, also known as Pearl, also known as Iridescent. So these three do have slightly different attributes. However, they're lumped together because for the most part, their description matches across the board even with the slightly different attributes that they do have. Now, crystal auras often get um, confused with rainbow auras, and this is because of the reflective quality that they have and a little bit of an iridescent nature that they have as well. So with that being said, to be a little bit more descriptive, the crystal aura has fasted layers to it um, that are reflective and it's kind of like if you were to walk up to like a slightly transparent mirror and you could see the person behind it, but there was still the mirror there reflecting your colors back to you. Now, a lot of readers, like I said, will mistake it for a rainbow aura, but crystal has its very own energetic attributes and qualities that are quite different than rainbow auras. Rainbow auras are really outgoing and usually a little bit more um, extroverted, whereas uh, crystal auras tend to be a little bit more introverted. Now, there are people who have rainbow auras that are introverted, but it's a little bit more rare. So with crystal auras, I would say about one in 300 people have an attribute of crystal aura in their aura field, and about one in 500 people have a full crystal aura, types of crystal aura. Some crystal auras will have multiple reflective surfaces like a crystal or rather a bunch of semi-clear tinted mirrors around the outside encasing the whole entire individual. And then other people will have a smaller portion, as I talked about earlier, of crystal energy where they can kind of view it, but it's not fully encasing and not acting as like a protective mechanism. Um, these people tend to feel a little bit more open and they can fully experience express themselves and feel a little bit more understood, whereas the people who have the fully encased crystal aura field tend to usually feel a little bit more like misunderstood or like other people can't see them for who they truly are, which is 
kind of true. They can't really see them because they can only really see themselves. Crystal aura individuals usually understand themselves very well. They usually have a very good internal relationship with themselves. However, because of that external reflective quality, like I had talked about earlier, they tend to oftentimes feel unseen or unheard or uncared for um, when it comes to their relationships with people outside of them. And this oftentimes kind of pushes crystal aura people to be a little bit more introverted. They usually like hiking, spending time in nature, and um, really kind of just getting rooted out in nature, staying grounded, um, because in that space, they usually feel a little bit calmer and a little bit more connected. Um, and a lot of that, again, is the reflective aspect. Um, and for people who have crystal auras, it's like they fully understand the people outside of them, um, but the other people seeing them can only kind of see themselves reflected in the crystal aura person. So people are naturally drawn to those who have crystal auras, but tend to have almost false relationships with them where they feel like, they really know the person with the crystal aura super well and the person with the crystal aura is like nobody gets me um it's unfortunately very common with this aura and working on having clear communication with those that you're close to can really help bridge that gap crystal auras definitely have some fey energy and because of this they really enjoy the simple pleasures like walking in the woods as i talked about earlier um, they love crystals as well flowers, things like that. Um, they're very peaceful, very serene individuals, and their energy and their presence brings a lot of healing to those around them. On rare occasion, people who have crystal auras can find that they may have random people who kind of have outbursts of anger around them, and this is simply because those who have a crystal aura are able to immediately reflect the other individual's energy to them, um, leaving the other person kind of in whatever mood that they came to the crystal aura with, and sometimes they see themselves for who they really are, and they're like, Arr! and then they get mad at the person who has the crystal aura. So with that in mind, those who have a crystal aura do very well not to take things too personally, and oftentimes these individuals really don't take things very personally. Career and relationship. Because of their ability to sense others' energy and reflect that back to them, they make great therapists, healers, yoga teachers, and counselors. Their crystal aura can be slightly introverted, making them great artists, writers, and poets as well. Now, I want to really specify, though, that they are fantastic energy healers. They tend to naturally have this healing energy to them when people come around them, and they tend to really soften the energy in the room, and they're kind of like a breath of fresh air. Like, you know, when it's winter time and you open up your window for the first time and it's just a warm enough spring day and you get that fresh air into your house, that's very much so how Crystal Aura feels. Like that bright, fresh spring breeze just into your house and that's definitely their vibe relationships for crystal auras. In relationships, the crystal aura creates a grounded energy for their partner and brings a lot of joy and pleasure to the relationship. However, they oftentimes feel unseen, so they do well with partners who are also empathic and intuitive, capable of picking up on the minor shifts the crystal aura that others are incapable of noticing. Purple and green aura individuals make great matches for those who have crystal auras. And in case you're wondering, I have a blog post that I wrote before creating this video that I'm reading off of the specific section here. Um, and as I mentioned at the end of all the colors, if you're interested, I do have an aura masterclass which teaches you how to physically see auras, and I mean physically see them. It's one of my favorite classes. I'm working on adding more classes and more courses. The next one will be focused on teaching people how to see spirit guide. So if you're interested in that, join the email list in the description section of this video. All right, we're on to clear now. Clear aura. This one is very, very rare. Okay. Um, I have seen one clear aura so far and I was like, am I seeing what I think I'm seeing? Sensing what I think I'm sensing? I am. Okay. <laughs> 
very, very fascinating. Having a fully clear aura is incredibly, incredibly rare. It's like one in 600 people. However, I've seen where people have a very small portion of clear in their aura field, and that is closer to being about one in 500 people who have just a small portion of clear. Around one in 600 people will have a small portion of clear in their aura field, and about one in 2,000 people will have a fully clear aura field. This one is incredibly, incredibly rare. Now, on occasion, people who have clear auras will kind of fill in a color to match whoever it is that they are around and whoever they are nearby. They're very empathic, very similar to rainbow and crystal in this sense, but it's very different in the sense that their energy field is usually blank um, and that they pull in a color to match somebody near them to understand it and then kind of go back to being clear. It's really interesting. Types of clear aura. Now, you can have a fully clear aura, as I talked about earlier. Um, what's really interesting about these auras is sometimes they can get kind of cloudy, kind of foggy, and this is usually when they're overwhelmed or they're feeling kind of down. Um, it's almost like a body of water, you know, if, there, if there's a lot of movement, the water becomes kind of difficult to see through. Um, or it kind of gets like muggy, if that makes sense. It's very interesting. Partially clear aura is a little bit more common where they just have a portion of clear, and this is usually used by people who are really empathic, really intuitive, um, and it's almost like a mirror or like a crystal ball where they pick up on somebody else's energy, they kind of put it in this like little energy port that they have in their aura field and they kind of eye it and they're like, ah, oh, okay, interesting. Um, and they usually use this as a way to like work with other people around them and to understand other people's perspectives and dynamics and um, it's, it's very fascinating. Personality traits of a clear aura individual. Clear aura individuals can be a little bit peculiar at times and a little bit hard to understand, almost changing like the tides. This is because they often pick up on other people's energy around them, but unlike the crystal aura, they do not hold their own space while doing so. The crystal aura individuals that I just spoke about before on this video, um, they tend to have those barriers up and so they kind of see and perceive other people's energy, but they don't take it in. Whereas clear aura individuals kind of absorb it and if they're around a lot of people, they can be very quick to change and move and to flow to match other people's energy. It's kind of like if you pour water into a vase and the water takes the structure of the vase. That's a little bit about how clear aura individuals work. They usually kind of move and flow to match the energy fields around them. Oftentimes clear individuals feel a bit unsure of themselves and they can find themselves changing their energy field very quickly. Again, this is because of that ability that they have to shift to match others' energy around them. On occasion, having a clear aura can be a little bit of a trauma response. Um, maybe having very intense dynamics in the family growing up and feeling like they needed to shift and change in order to match those dynamics. And with that, then feeling like they couldn't embrace and connect with different aspects of themselves. Um, that's not always the case though, but it is good for people to that have a clear aura to take some time to sit down and journal and kind of um, just notice when their energy is shifting around different people and decide and discern what different things that they enjoy. However, this is a really very cool, very unique color to have and it does come with a lot of empathic and intuitive abilities. These people are very powerful. They can adapt and flow with literally any situation. It's amazing. For the most part, they're shy, but they are very outgoing when reciprocating somebody's energy that's really fun and outgoing around them. Career and relationship for those who have a clear aura. Careers for individuals who have a clear aura, it's kind of a wild card. They could really find themselves anywhere, and this is because of how adaptable that they are. Um, however, because they tend to get overwhelmed by being around too much energy, the careers that they usually don't go into are easier to go over. They're less likely to be found being CEOs, doctors, 
uh, military dentist, um, high intensity jobs, you usually find people with clear auras in spaces that feel calmer, more serene, like being a yoga teacher, um, you know, teaching people how to meditate, things kind of along those lines are where you're more likely to find somebody with a clear aura. Because clear auras in relationships are so adaptable, they'll likely find themselves with any partner that has a really strong, really high intensity personality. However, they do really well when they find a partner that's emotionally and mentally grounded and that is very nurturing and loving and enjoys the adaptability and the flow of the individual who has a clear aura. Clear auras do very well with those who have sky blue, um, maybe those who have a purple, I would say, are a good match as well because that's the crown chakra. Um, not any of the darker tones of blue though, sky blue would be more preferable, um, and they would do well with any individuals that have uh, bright orange or that have any any tonality of green would do very well for them. Um, a little bit less on the forest green though, more of like a bright green would be a really good match for those who have clear auras. As I mentioned in the other colors above, I do have the Aura Masterclass now open for enrollment if you want to learn how to physically see auras. If you're interested in my future classes and courses that I'm building, the next one upcoming will be focused on teaching you how to channel and how to connect with your spirit guides. That will be linked, uh, it'll be announced, I should say, in my emails. So if you're interested in that, join my email list. It is in the description section of this video. And if you enjoyed this, hit that subscribe button, the like button, and comment and let me know. All right, on to the next color, indigo. This is one of my favorites. Okay, uh, indigos are rare. There are about one in 400 people have indigo, and it is so, so unique. It is... I'm excited about this one, if you can't tell. What makes an indigo aura an indigo aura? Well, it correlates to the third eye chakra, also known as the pineal gland, in the center of your head here. And these individuals are very easily interconnected with the ethereal realms and kind of seeing the unseen. And most of them already have uh, some capability of seeing energy around them. Unlike the other aura colors discussed above, where there could be just a small portion to a large portion that takes up um, the majority of how your aura reading would work, indigo is so prominent that it is one of the colors that even if you have a small amount of it, it still has this like this stamp, this staple of energy to your aura field, which is like, it's very unique. It's cool. It's cool stuff. Personality traits of the indigo aura. Indigo auras are incredibly unique. They oftentimes have a spiritual team that they came from and that they have this ability to channel. It's really, it's fascinating. It's kind of like a pod of energetic beings that are, how I would describe them is a mixture between um, ethereal Native American kind of energy and um, otherworldly like aliens kind of they're very tall indigo beings um, that work with those who have indigo energy that have incarnated here on this plane in this this realm on this planet's timeline it's fascinating I absolutely love indigo I'm always like <laughs> staring, staring whenever I get somebody with an indigo aura. This indigo energetic team that I'm talking about, the spiritual pod of indigo, um, they're very hyper-focused on raising the frequency of this planet. Um, people who incarnate, who have indigo, usually kind of incarnate sort of far away from each other. Um, and it almost works as this energy that like communicates with itself, um, kind of like a grid of energy. Um, but with incarnated people, it's so cool. And the reason for this, the separation is so that they can echo kind of like when you throw a stone into the water and it creates those ripples, that individual can kind of act as like an antenna and echo a ripple of this indigo energy download um, that's coming into a lot of the space here on earth and this color is becoming more and more common as we move along into planetary shifts. 
Indigo Aura individuals can usually see the world around them from a very unique perspective, and they usually have a very unique outlook on life that they share with people around them and that other people are very fascinated by. Um, usually individuals who have indigo auras also have very unique facial features and sometimes even a unique voice to how they communicate about things. Because indigo auras are naturally gifted in the spiritual field, they would do very, very well to learn how to hone their spiritual abilities, whether it's learning how to physically see auras, communicating with their spirit guides, anything along those lines would benefit them greatly in this lifetime and those who are around them in their lives as well. The energetic group that Indigo comes from has a pact that about 80 to 60% of them will stay in the ethereal realm and that they will kind of help guide them through their lives here on earth. So Indigo Aura individuals would do very well to uh, ask for guidance from their guides and to kind of build up a communication format, whether that's asking for certain signs like seeing pennies on the street, seeing repetitive numbers, whatever they kind of choose, um, asking their guides for signs that show them that they're on path or um, that they need to go a different direction. However, they want to set up that form of communication um, would really benefit those who have an indigo aura. Now, indigo aura individuals, because they're so spread out, like I had talked about, and a large majority of this energy is more in the ethereal realm, um, they very rarely feel like they are on the same page with people around them. This is really common with people who have rare aura colors in general. Um, however, indigos especially feel kind of like they're off on their own journey, and they very much so are. It's very rare that an indigo aura individual will meet another person who has an indigo aura in this lifetime. Um, however, regardless, where they really find the the good juicy vibes of life is in their own expansion of their spiritual journey and going into that expansion and bringing that energy with them through them and bringing that into their lives and other people kind of seeing that and embracing that and enjoying that as well. Career and relationship for indigo aura individuals. Career for indigo aura individuals often correlates to their intense energetic abilities. Because they can practically tune into the unseen realms, they tend to do well with careers that require that kind of ability. Art, music, videography, spiritual teachers, things to kind of go along those lines. Indigo aura individuals do well with Reiki. You kind of get the idea. All right relationships for indigo aura individuals. As I talked about, they oftentimes feel kind of alone, kind of like loners, lone wolves. Um, <laughs> I don't know, I had to. Anyway, um, and so they tend to really, um, I threw myself off howling, hold on. <laughs> They very rarely come in contact with other people who have indigo auras. However, that being said, they can still find a great partner that understands them and gets along with them very well. They do well with those who have uh, usually purple auras or sometimes blue, and that's because it's the closest to the indigo chakra, um, third eye chakra. Um, so blue would be throat and purple is crown. However, I find oftentimes they do very well with those who have purple. Uh, specifically, deep purple does very well with those who have indigo auras. If you're interested in learning how to physically see auras, um, you can definitely find that linked in the description section below. If that class is currently closed as you're watching this, then join my email list and I will let you know when the class opens back up again here. Emerald Aura. About one in a hundred people have an emerald aura, so it's not like the rarest, but it's still towards the rare side, so I decided to include it in this video. What makes an emerald aura an emerald aura? Green correlates to the heart chakra. How we get emerald is through a lot of energetic focus, usually many different lives focused on being in our heart chakra energy space. Now, this aura is something that you can be born with or it's a color that you might kind of fall into as you develop in your spiritual abilities in this lifetime. Emerald is a main aura color. It's incredibly, incredibly rare. Usually it's seen in the 30 
percent to five percent kind of range in the aura field and honestly i have yet to see somebody who has a higher amount of emerald in their aura field as i'm filming this right now it's 444 just thought you should know you emerald aura people you're you're grooving and a moving with the universe today <laughs> personality traits of the emerald aura so this one i like to always tell the story about my great grandmother. She lived to 102 years old, and I really think having your heart focus is what really brings through a good long life. Now, she would have all of us over, and there was five kids that my mom's family was from, so my aunts and uncles and my mom, right? Five kids, and they all had partners, so 10 adults. Um, and then they all had kids, a minimum of two kids. Um, so they, you know, what would that be? 10 kids. Yeah. And then my, um, second aunt or whatever, she was like somehow related. She would come over with her children. She had like, I think, well, two daughters when we were younger, but anyway, so in total, you get the idea, lots of people, and uh, she would have all of us over, she had this little townhouse, and she would always have all of this food, she's like in her 90s when I remember this, she'd have all this food, and tea, and all these different things, all these like wild kids running around in like not a huge space by any means. And she would just like love it. Um, she would hug everybody on their way in and on their way out every single time. And it was just so cute. And this is very much so how people who have emerald auras are. They're very heart focused. They're very sweet. They're very nurturing. They're really loving. Um, so if you have an emerald aura, like just know, just know you're just like, mm, you're such a squishy squishy, squishy. <laughs> I can't pronounce it properly. Squishy person. They tend to care very deeply for their pets, their family, their friends, neighbors. Um, they're so nurturing, loving, and warm to be around, and people um, tend to naturally be very loving as well towards people who have emerald auras because they sense this, this warmth and this just really great energy that they have. Emerald Aura individuals usually have kind of an old soul energy to them and people around them feel very comforted by their presence and they bring a lot of peaceful energy to the space around them. Uh, these individuals do well looking at metaphysical properties of the stone emerald to get an even better understanding of how this color works in the aura field and what magical properties it holds. And if you're curious what I'm looking at, I'm looking at my website and my blog post for these colors as a reference as I go through. And if you're wanting to go over and read that, it'll be in the description of this video. Because this aura is developed usually from different past lives, it can be very beneficial to do a past life regression just to get a little bit more insight and a little bit more info on that. If you're curious about that, I do have a past life regression in my store and that, of course, as always, is linked in the description of this video or you can go to themagicalaura.com. Career and relationship. Emerald auras bring a lot of warmth to their career and oftentimes find themselves in fulfilling roles or creating fulfilling energy for those around them. Because Emerald is a natural caretaker, they do well in careers where they can care for others, nurses, daycare, teachers, etc. However, they thrive in really any environment that gives them the chance to be loving. Relationships are often very fulfilling for those with Emerald as they have an innate ability to pick easygoing and loving partners. However, they may at times feel that they give more than they receive. It's really good for an Emerald Aura to ensure that they take the time to fill up their own cup emotionally and kind of set a schedule for themselves of like one fun thing a week that they're going to do just for themselves. However, they usually find a very long-term, very stable, and very satisfying relationship very easily in this lifetime. As I say at the end of all the colors, if you're interested in learning how to physically see auras, I have the Aura Masterclass linked in the description section of this video, and if it's not currently open, then definitely join my email list and I will notify you when that class opens back up. And I will be adding more classes and more courses if you're interested in learning how to channel spirit guides. That will be the next class that I will be launching probably around the end of the summer. Right now it's 2022 so you know 
end of the summer in 2022. Gold Aura. Those who often think that they have gold usually have bright yellow or lemon yellow. Um, gold is about 1 in 200 people, so it's definitely more towards the rare side. It's not one of the rarest aura colors, but it is definitely up there. Types of Gold Aura. Just like any other aura color, we do have variations of how much of this color the individual has in the aura field. Gold as main aura color is incredibly rare. Usually I see it in about 40 to 2% of um, the aura field as far as the percentage of color goes. Those with a higher percentage in their main color being gold stand out in a crowd and people often flock to them naturally. They tend to be leaders without intending to be, often have large friend groups. These individuals shine so brightly, it is magnetic. I've met a couple people who are gold when I was like out and about, and I've always just been like, oh. And it's interesting because you do, you just see like all these people that are just like, I love this person. Now, how we get gold in the aura field is usually through multiple incarnations. And these incarnations are focused on having high moral standing. And usually they have very difficult past lives that made them kind of create these determinations of what is wrong and what is right. Um, and it's very, very beneficial for people who have gold auras to do a past life regression. Um, I do have a past life regression in my store, themagicalaura.com, if you're interested in kind of, you know, regressing into a past life and checking it out. These individuals are very passionate about what is right and what is wrong. They have a very high moral compass, as I was talking about earlier, and they really just have such a strong direction to them, and they do very well following that intuition and following that inner compass that's so, so strong with individuals who have gold. These individuals have a natural air of confidence, direction, and intensity about them. Their energy is often angelic in nature, um, and they do very much so have kind of that angelic realm, um, usually that they've kind of incarnated from, and so they naturally connect into a little bit of like a warrior energy as well that comes with that. Gold aura individuals are usually very loving, but yet intense, straightforward, um, and then often very concise and decisive. Gold is also seen as being very divine, and we see this a lot in religious artworks as well. And since gold is a conduit, we definitely see that it amplifies and boosts the rest of the colors in the aura field, making the person very magnetic. These individuals are really powerful when it comes to manifesting what it is that they desire. However, what it is that they desire has to come from a place of solid moral standings, and then it's like, bam, right into the reality. Career and relationship for gold aura individuals. Individuals who have gold auras tend to really enjoy careers that have a high moral standing and good finances that come along with that as well because they know their value. They can be divinely inspired business owners, entrepreneurs, they can work for other individuals, but they usually really like to see things all the way through. And usually they like to know like where the money's coming in, who's it, who it's going going to um, and how it's being spent and how it's operating in a way that benefits other people. In career in general, they're divinely guided. They like to be in a high alignment, high energy, and finance, finances seem to just kind of gravitate to them with a lot of ease. Relationships usually come very easy for those who have gold auras, just like everything else does. However, they oftentimes feel that their partners kind of fall short of what it is that they really expect in a relationship. And this is simply just because their energy is so intense and so magnetic. Those who have gold auras do very well with individuals who have green auras and individuals who have true blue or violet as well. Now, true blue is probably the best match to those who have gold auras because it's oftentimes true blue individuals that have incarnated over a couple of different lifetimes that then move into this golden energy. And so it's a little bit closer to home as far as um, the feeling of being with a true blue partner. 
finding a partner that has similar moral standards and a moral compass really helps aid the gold aura individual in feeling more grounded, more comfortable, and like they can be even more themselves and really just make life happen. If you're interested in learning how to physically see auras, the Aura Masterclass is currently open as I create this video. If you go and check it out and it's closed, just join my email list that's also in the description section below, and I will notify you when that class opens back up. Now, I will be adding more classes and courses to that website as I go along and I continue to keep building. The next course will be focused on teaching people how to channel their spirit guides, so if that's something that you're interested in learning, definitely make Make sure that you subscribe to that email list. Silver Aura. Now we see the Silver Aura in about 1 in 600 people, so it's definitely up there on the rare scale. Types of Silver Aura. The darker Silver Aura is the less common and more rare of the Silver Auras. Dark Silver Aura individuals typically have a really incredibly intense ability to perceive the unknown realms and to tap into channeling spirits and things along those lines. This can come as unique visions, dreams, um, things along those lines, just downloads that they get all of a sudden that are like really profound and really intense, like deja vu, you know? These individuals would do very well to take notes of their visions, take notes of their dreams, and learn to work with these abilities and to really build upon them. Just like gray silver hair indicates somebody of old age, it also indicates an old soul when we see silver in the energetic aura field. Light silver aura individuals are more common of the two silver auras, and these individuals tend to have more of a sleek kind of shine to their aura field, and it's like a smooth quality. Because of this, silver aura individuals can navigate their lives with great ease. Things seem to kind of smoothly move along for them. Them, and it's very fluid experience. Light silver indicates somebody who has a very pure energy and that has very unique abilities that correspond with their ability to kind of be smooth enough to understand other people's energy around them but not take that on. I don't know if you've ever seen Harry Potter with Luna Lovegood but silver aura individuals are very much so that vibe. Personality traits of silver aura individuals. Silver auras tend to have a very unique wisdom to them and often come off a bit unorthodox at times. They often are able to see things slash perceive things that others are not and have a very mystical and magical energy that can be hard to explain. Silver auras can often detect the most minor energy shifts of people around them and in the event that someone's energy is ill-intending, silver auras will intuitively know ahead of time. These individuals are very spiritually gifted and are required to use their spiritual gifts for the good of all around them in this lifetime. If they choose to use their gifts in a way that's negative or harmful to other people, then they will start to find that they lose their innate ability to connect to these ethereal realms and to their natural mag their natural magical abilities. Career and relationship for silver aura individuals. Silver aura individuals do very well oftentimes in their career. They are a little bit more introverted um, because of their natural gifts and talents. Because of this, they often do better in careers that allow them to go at a pace that suits them best. Work from home jobs are the ideal for those with silver auras. If a silver aura individual feels comfortable, outgoing enough, they excel in spiritual work, reading tarot, astrology charts, things of that nature. Also, something I forgot to mention, silver aura individuals tend to have a natural ability to communicate with animals and to understand animals' emotions and just vibes very, very well. Relationships for silver aura individuals are often very smooth, fluid, and easy. There isn't much that silver aura individuals get hung up on. They are oftentimes so easygoing that their ideal partner is also somebody who's easygoing and laid back. Silver aura individuals do well with those who have forest green and deep purple. 
And uh, yeah, if you're ever interested in learning how to physically see auras, um, there is the Aura Masterclass linked in the description section of this video. I would love to have you in there. Now, if you check that out and the class is currently closed, enrollment will open up again sometime soon, I'm sure. If you're interested in joining that class in the future, definitely make sure that you sign up for my email list, which is also in the description, description section of this video. Copper aura. What makes a copper aura a copper aura? Copper auras are similar to copper itself in metaphysical properties, energy qualities. About one in 100 people have a copper in their aura field. However, I usually notice it as a smaller percentage, anywhere from about 2% to 30% being as much as I've seen in the aura field. Now, occasionally copper will get confused with people who have burnt orange auras, so I do suggest checking out the burnt orange aura just in case that is your aura color instead of copper. Most of the time, copper is seen on the inside of the aura field, meaning most readers oftentimes don't pick up on it. Most of the time, readers focus on the main aura colors, the ones that are really obvious that you can physically see very quickly. However, whenever I'm reading somebody, I like to look at all the layers because we oftentimes have our mystical qualities towards the inside of the aura field so that we feel a little bit more normal and feel a little bit more safe around people around us. Now, because copper acts as an energetic amplifier to the aura field, I will say this is also why a lot of other readers have a hard time picking up on this color because the other colors, the other parts of your energy become boosted and become like even more kind of pronounced and intense. Personality traits of copper. Copper individuals usually have a certain kind of spark to their energy field that other people really have a hard time putting their finger on. Oftentimes copper individuals have a really easy time drawing people to them and this is because they have kind of a magnetic, high amplified energy field around them and it's kind of irresistible. Because of this, they also have the ability to change the energy in the room around them almost like a drop of a hat. Because of this ability, it's very important for people with copper aura fields to be cognizant of their energy when they're out and about, and just in general, checking in with themselves occasionally, because it does shift the dynamic around them so dramatically that if they start to get kind of grumpy, they might notice that people around them start to kind of get grumpy and start to be like, Meh, towards the person who has a copper aura as well. Just like a magnet has two ends, copper aura individuals can draw people in very easily or push them out depending on what they personally are in alignment with. Copper itself has natural healing abilities and just like copper, those with this aura color are capable of bringing in a lot of healing energy to those around them. On occasion, copper can get drawn into difficult friendships or relationships because ultimately they intuitively know they have something within them that can help others. However, they need to be cautious when it comes to allowing others into their energy fields. Copper often needs time to raise their own energetic vibration and frequency in order to be beneficial to themselves and those around them. Career and relationship for copper aura individuals. Copper individuals in their careers often do quite well as long as they are not overly self-sacrificing, otherwise they can end up in a job that is quite taxing with little pay. Copper energy is very much like a kind of strong ox. They can take a lot on. However, at some point, if they put too much of a load on, they can get exhausted and run down. When it comes to career, copper aura individuals need to have a little bit of a selfish perspective in order to keep themselves aligned. Rules with themselves about how much effort should equal how much pay is very important for those who have copper so that they know that they are in fact getting the value that they intrinsically deserve in this lifetime in their career. Copper auras in relationships are very similar to career, though oftentimes they can get locked into relationships that pull the energy out of them, aka energy vampire relationships. Copper aura individuals need to have a set routine around self-care. This will offer them stability in their energy field and will ultimately bring a partnership that can match their energy. Copper auras do especially well with individuals who have green auras. This is the color of the heart chakra and it's a little bit more nurturing. They have a tendency to be more giving and those who have copper do a little bit better when they feel like they have a really good ground base in their home environment especially. 
If you're interested in learning how to physically see auras, you can find the link for that in the description section below for my aura masterclass. Now, if that class is currently closed, then just join my email list and I will let you know when that class opens back up. I am always working on adding more classes and more courses. The next one I'll be adding on will be focused on teaching people how to channel their spirit guides and talk with the, them. And I'm very excited about that. And I'd love to have you as part of my community in that email list. Tan Aura Individuals. Tan auras are about one in 300. It's pretty rare. It's not the rarest, but it's, it's up there. Personality Traits of the Tan Aura. Tan Aura individuals can waver in personality and emotions, occasionally being a little volatile. This is because they ultimately crave comfort and stability out of life. However, they go through phases where they can become rebellious and destructive. Tan Aura individuals tend to be hyper-focused on what they want and what they don't have, so much to the point that they close off the energetic flow of what they want. Tan Aura individuals can do quite well for themselves if they remember to prioritize their need for stability over all else. Once they do this, along with having more of an organized schedule slash routine, they will find life can flow very easily and smooth for them. Career and relationship for Tan Auras. Tan Aura individuals can find themselves in a wide array of careers. However, the most common are hairstylists, massage therapists, bakers slash chef. Estheticians are also incredibly important with the Tan Aura. They can also do very well with interior design. Relationships for those with tan auras can be kind of difficult. On one hand, they want someone stable and grounded to give them a sense of security, and on the other hand, they want someone who is wild, rebellious, and free. Because of this, tan aura individuals may find themselves with either a very grounded partner like a green aura or a wild partner like a red aura. If you would like to learn how to physically see auras, I do have an aura masterclass. The information for that is linked in the description section of this video. Now, if you go and check in that class is currently not open, feel free to join my email list and that's how I will notify you when the class opens back up for enrollment. And I will also be working on building more classes and more courses focused on teaching people how to, next we'll be focusing on teaching people how to channel their spirit guides. White auras. What makes a white aura a white aura? Oftentimes, other readers are seeing bright yellow and mistaking it for a white aura. Now, when I see bright yellow in the aura field, what I mean is if you stare at the sun, you close your eyes, it's almost white, but you have that yellow rim around it. That's kind of what a bright yellow aura is like. It's pretty blinding. Now, a white aura is its much more rare than I think a lot of people think it is. So it's about one in 300 people that have a white aura. Personality traits of a white aura. A white aura can be a short-term aura color indicating somebody is ill and might be passing away soon or that they are going through some major life changes. It is often seen in newborn babies up to about two years old since they have come from a higher dimension and it literally is like they just poop in from, you know, like when we die, we go into the light. Um, when they come here, they are the light and they're radiating that high intensity, pure energy. Um, and they do that for quite a while. And so it's more commonly seen in children. And like I said, occasionally people who are sickly because they're either downloading a high vibrational frequency so that they can continue to stay here or they're, you know, maybe going to die. Just like the short term indicates connection to higher realms, the long term can indicate this as well. White tends to have an angelic, ethereal energy to it. Oftentimes, these individuals come off as pure and divine. Their purpose on earth is to lift the frequency and to help aid others by shining their light bright for those around them. Often, those with white auras are soothing to be around. Those who have internal discord often find themselves uncomfortable about around those who have white auras. Because of this, white aura individuals may find that some are very attracted while others seem to just stop entering into your life completely. White auras are divinely guided and protected. This individual would do well to learn how to channel their spirit guides. Career and relationship. Also, I apologize. I am reading off of my blog post and the reason for it is my computer is starting to get too hot from filming and I'm already at like 
an hour, almost two hours of filming. Um, and so all of my devices are like, Ugh. so we are going to get you all the info, but instead I'm going to read it from here instead of reading it, remembering it, and then talking to you. I apologize. Career and relationships for white aura individuals. White auras are naturally gifted in careers that allow them to tap into their higher realms. They would do quite well as energy healers, tarot readers, and spiritual teachers. However, they may use their healing abilities in many different forms, writing kids books, making beautiful artworks, and so forth. While white aura individuals usually do best when they are in a career that feels rewarding to them, when in alignment, white aura individuals have good finances. White aura individuals usually do best when they are in a career that feels rewarding to them on a very high level too. It's like a ethereal rewarding energy. White auras usually have an easy time in relationships. However, they often find themselves looking for a partner with as pure of intentions as their own. Because of this, some white aura individuals prefer to be single. However, when they do find a proper match, they are very loving and a devoted partner. Usually wanting a long-term relationship with a deep connection, white aura individuals usually end up connecting well with all other aura colors, but tend to avoid red auras and those with deeper tones in the aura field. However, it depends on what other aura colors the white aura individual has, and that can play a part into the compatibility in a lot of ways when it comes to the white aura. Since the white aura itself is a little bit more chill, say you had forest green, you'd be more likely to get along with somebody else who has green or purple, just as an example. If you're ever interested in learning how to physically see auras, my aura masterclass is linked in the description section below. And if you go and check on that and it's currently closed, then definitely join my email list. And I will be working on adding more classes and more courses as I go along. The next class that I will be focusing on building will be teaching you guys how to channel your spirit guides and how to start talking with them. And I'm very excited for that. So definitely join my email list if you're interested in that and thank you so much for checking out this video and I love you guys so much. Bye!